G'day, fellas. Welcome to a casted game. Spawning in the north of the map, you know him as Hut. Uh, this gentleman plays StarCraft 2 professionally. He's one of the best players, being in the rank uh, in the top five, actually, uh, when it comes to Age of Empires for the closed beta. Uh, his opponent spawning in the south of the map is going to be Zertan. Uh, this gentleman, I believe, played Age of Empires online and was the best player in the Celeste era. So one of the... Uh, the more recent era, the map that we're going to be playing on today, will reveal it for you. It is, of course, I wanted to say Warring Islands, but I think it's called Archipelago. So we've got Hutt, who is spawning up here. He's going to be playing the Abbasids, and down to the south, Zertan, going to be playing the Holy Roman Empire. So one of the things to note about this is each civilization, at least that's available in the beta, has got an advantage for water some way, somehow. Okay, now you might be thinking, all right, well, so everyone's even on water? Well, not so much. Just like the Portuguese in Age of Empires 3, just like the Italians in Age of Empires 2, each civilization uh, ha has got significant strengths. And in Age of Empires 4, the Abbasid dynasty is one of those sieves. What we see already in the north of the map, Hutt is going for a big boy boat boom. He's already dropping down a double dock. Now, one of the concerning things for me is that Hutt hasn't, hasn't actually located any deep sea fish yet, or at least I don't think he has. We'll have a look from his perspective and see if we can spot it. Yeah, only finding the shorefish so far. Now, shorefish don't actually gather the same speed as deep sea fish. Ideally, you want to be on deep sea fish. So the perfect spot for Hutt to have been putting down his docks would have been down here. So he would have had great access to these deep water fish. That would have enabled him to have a much better eco. But it doesn't mean that he's not going to be able to use this effectively in the early game. With a double dock boom like this, he's going to be able to, to maximize his efficiency. I've long theorized that this would be the best strategy on a map like this, just simply because of how cheap fishing boats are. So fishing boats are 60 wood each. So they had their cost reduced. They were originally 100 wood. And when you combine that with the bonus that the Abbasids get, so the Abbasid bonus that they get is that their docks cost less. So if we go and have a look at a villager, you'll see right there, the dock is 74, oh, sorry, sorry, 75, 75 wood. And when we compare that over to his opponent, Zertan, who's playing the Holy Roman Empire, he's doing the same thing, dropping down a dock. Uh, we'll take a look at his villagers. You'll see that the dock is 150 wood. So already in the early game, when you compare it, you know, his build to a, st a standard civilization, he's saving 150 wood. So that means that he's able to open double dock sooner than his opponents, and he's able to begin gaining an economic lead. That's one of the reasons why I think the Abbasid are the strongest, or at least one of the strongest, civilizations on the water. At least when it comes to an economic boom like this, typically on a map like this, you're going to be playing it a little bit more economic than other maps that have got access to water. Down to the south, looking at Zertan. So he's going for the double docks. So one of the things to note with double docks, as far as I'm aware, they can't actually be boosted by prelates. So you kind of you're losing a fair bit of bonus there from your natural resources, if that makes sense. Over here, we can see that the prelate sitting very comfortably on the lumber camp. Lumber camp doing a great job, going to be gathering up all those resources. One of the things to note, I don't know if this is bugged. I can't find this at all in any of their civilization description. Okay. You take a look at this villager. It doesn't have a buff, but it's got this thing right here. Extra carry capacity. So the villagers of, of the Holy Roman Empire can carry more than any other civilization. I don't know exactly why that is. Uh, I couldn't, as I said, I couldn't find it at all. But in addition to that, in, in addition to carrying more, the yeah. prelate buffs them up. So it provides a significant bonus for it, for the villagers. You saw it just drop off one of the villagers there, but it's called Inspired. So villagers gather resources 40% faster as well. So you're getting like massive double bonuses for your economy in the early game, as long as you've got those prelates out. But uh, it's important to remember that they they are quite expensive. They're 100 gold each. And when you're making a prelate, you're not making villages in the town center. So as a consequence, it's going to mean that, uh, you know, th there is a, a little bit of a, a delay in potentially gathering resources from your villages. Now we've got the House of Wisdom going to be going down in the north of the map over for Hutt. We'll take a look what wing he's going to be going up with. I did theorize on this map in particular... Uh, you would probably think about going cultural wing or military wing, uh, but probably cultural wing to open up and then maybe even into the economic wing in the uh, w once you get up to the castle age. When you consider the fact that Hutt has got access up here to a coastal trade post site, keep in mind it's not particularly far away uh, from his docks, and ideally you want it to be as far away from your dock as possible. So if you were to place a dock up here and then trade down to this site down here, that's the way that you maximize your benefits. But then the problem is you also have a little bit of a difficulty because now you've got an opponent who is potentially going to be raiding your trading line. So something to consider. We'll take a look and see whether he does opt to trade in the early game. 
He's, he has actually selected an age up. We'll take a look what he's going up with. Going up with the Culture Wing. So going to be accessing the Preservation of Knowledge. For anybody unfamiliar with that, that is the technology that's going to be available to him in the first, or the, rather the second age. Reducing the cost of all subsequent technologies by 30%. Now that doesn't affect age ups, but it affects pretty much everything else. It, it affects your... Uh, your armor upgrades, your attack upgrades in the... I was going to say in the engineering bay. Apologies. In the evolution chamber. Sorry. Uh, you, the reason why I, I go back to thinking the evolution chamber or the engineering bay is because in StarCraft 2, it's very common that you just place down two of those buildings and you get like your upgrades uh, working at the same time. And you do the exact same thing in this game. You go double engineering bay, but it's not. It's called blacksmith. Um, just because of the time that it takes to drop... Uh, a blacksmith and do that actual research it's just much more efficient for you if you can drop two blacksmiths at the same time and then begin your research that way it's, it's going to enable you to have a much cleaner transition we actually see now that hut has found and located this deep water fish down to the south of his base so he's going to be transitioning his villages over towards that deep sea uh, fishing great choice when we go spot what his opponent's doing, Zertan, he's almost up the at the second age. Going to be going up now with the Minework Palace. So one of the curious things, Minework Palace is the gift that keeps on giving throughout the game. Going to be reducing the cost down. It's interesting. Both players have actually got uh, tech or tech cost reducing uh, technologies or buildings. Minework Palace is going to be doing the same thing, but it's only for the blacksmith. So whereas Huts is going to be affecting all of his uh, his fishing upgrades. So say for an example, extended lines, that's going to get reduced by 30%. So it affects drastically more. So when it comes to Zertan's age up, it's a bit more of a uh, a bit more of an early game bonus. Um, it does obviously continue giving for the rest of the game because you are going to eventually get those tier two, tier three upgrades. But for the most part, when you compare it to say 30% reduction on costs flat for technology, it's pretty impressive, the preservation of knowledge. So Looking forward to seeing exactly how we're, we're going to spot Hut playing it. Zertan reaching the second age. We'll take a look and see what he's got in the dock. Yeah, Looks like it's... more fishing boats, but he's actually got a galley that's come out so far. He's got a, an ad additional sails coming out, so increasing the speed of his naval uh, units. And going to be training another galley. So two galleys going to be coming out for him. Plenty of docks right now for Hut in the north of the map. This is two docks that he's got that he initially started with. And two more docks down to the south. This is absolutely huge. Now, do we see markets out from either of these players? We do indeed see markets out. This is exactly what I theorized would happen at the top level meta. Because you've got so much economy coming in from your fishing boats. The fishing boats are so cheap that you're going to actually go into a market and then sell all that food that you're getting and then reinvest that. We'll take a look and see if we spot the same thing happening in the base of Zerden. And we don't actually see that. And you can just see how much food he's stacking up here. 1300 food stacked up at the moment because he hasn't dropped down that market so all those resources he's not going to be able to use even though he's got three docks out even though he's doing a lot of fishing it's it's basically wasted resources so it's important to consider potentially dropping a market down when you are looking at doing a double dock boom a triple dock boom potentially or in some cases like we've got hut doing at the moment a quadruple dock boom uh it doesn't look like he's going to have fishing boats coming out of these he's actually going for dows now Take a look at the difference between these two boats. You've got the Dow here, and then you've got the fishing boat. They're, they're very, very similar in their aesthetics. Very, very similar. So I don't actually know what the differences are. More Dows coming in now, but they're quite a quick ship. Very agile, nimble ship, I would say. With the Dow, they are affected by the upgrades from the Blacksmith. So keep in mind, uh, so increased. Uh, so you can see there are benefits from Blacksmith upgrade. So if you've got that Blacksmith down, make sure you get the plus one attack for the upgrade. I think you also get the, uh, the armor bonuses as well. So... That's probably a good idea to get. Probably don't need to get the melee bonus. I suspect they're probably not going to be taking a lot of melee damage out on the open water unless they happen to go upon a Kraken that's uh, somewhere out here. But uh, I haven't seen Krakens yet. Maybe that's something that we can talk about with the developers. Potential Kraken patch. Maybe that, that'll be like the April Fool's patch is you, you'll have a Kraken that spawns on the map. And if you kill the Kraken, then you just win the game. I like that. That, that, that. Let's talk to them about that. That could work. Galley is going to begin pushing into the north. Take a look at the stat difference between these two ships. Plenty of stat difference between... Galleys have got significantly uh, greater range as well. Not as much maneuverability, but a, a lot higher range. Going to be moving to the north. Spotting out a couple of fishing boats up here. And we can see that Zertan is, is forcing Hart to actually move these fishing boats back. He knows that he's coming in. Plenty of dows down here to the south. Going to be outnumbering the ships of Zertan. And Zertan realizing is in a bit of a difficult spot. You see that little bit of a moonwalk as the... The ships turn around, trying to do a bit of a fade away, but going to be looking to focus down the ships. We see the first galley going to be trying to get away, but look at Hut chasing him down, saying, you're not getting out of here alive. Another Dow going to be going down. Do the fishing boats get in time? They don't actually manage to get in time. Fishing boats can heal up 
uh, your ships in this game in Age of Empires 4, the fishing boats can actually work to heal up the Dows. So a pretty decent trade there, losing a Dow and at the same time taking out a Galleon. Look at this, chasing them down. Oh, this is absolutely cheeky. This is a difficult spot right now for Zerton. I suspect that Zerton's going to be... It, it, Wow, okay. So you really got to think about it from the perspective of, of what can Zerton do to win here. He needs to try and get back to his base, but at the same time, oh my lord, we've got the enemy fishing boats now coming out and looking to manage to get off a heal. Don't get there in time. Just seconds would have passed before that heal came out. And now plenty of, of galleys beginning to push out. Five galleys out now for Zerton. Hut, on the other hand, how many dows does he have? Let's take a quick stock take up to nine dows. And you can see the way that they group. It's a little bit harder. Focusing down, we've got Dows on the back line. Fishing boat's coming in to do a little bit of healing. We've got a fishing boat. You can tell it's a fishing boat because it's carrying fish. Just getting in on the action. And they're screaming out. More fishing boats coming in, just looking to heal up. They realize how important this is. We've got a galley going down and more and more boats getting in on the action. And such a huge mass of boats right here. 10 and 10 coming out from Hut. Hut looking incredibly dominating. More fishing boats coming in. Some with fish, some without fish. Everybody's going to be a little bit hungry. And it's important that reinforcements come in. These Dows are just looking great. I really don't know what's going on in this battle. It, it feels like I just want to attack move, but I feel like it's going to be really important. Hut looking like he's got a bit of a commanding lead right now. Still 10 boats uh, of each type on Zerton's perspective. He's down to four galleys, five fishing boats, down to three galleys now. Not many galleys are going to be remaining. We see that there's this one's down to half HP at this point, and it definitely it seems like the early game has been won by Hut. I don't know how much of that is going to be contributed to this early market and being able to use his resources in a meaningful way. Keep in mind, Zerton still sits here with almost 2,000 food that he has not used in any meaningful way. And as a consequence, he falls behind. He comes, he comes, uh, or he's falling behind. Blacksmith techs are coming in. We see that we've got plus one attack. Uh, we don't have plus one defense just yet for these boats, but the Dow's obviously doing an extra one attack is going to be incredible because consider the fact that they're firing a lot of arrows so you know that extra plus one really going to start stacking up so many dows as well out here and the meta here seems to be evolving towards age two fights really getting out on the open ocean and i suspect this might be a good game that we see here because zerton's in a difficult spot sure he can stay he can play he can potentially age up to the third age which i suspect we're going to see him do here but how do you take the water back? Once your opponent has, you know, managed to, to steal the water away like this, New Age has begun, actually. We see Zerton now reaching the third age. I'll take a look and see if we can spot his wonder. There it is down to the south. We're going up with the Regnitz Cathedral. So each relic that you place inside is going to be plus 200% uh, gold. So normally a relic would give you 100 gold a minute. This is going to give you 300 gold a minute. So not too bad at all. Uh, we'll take a look over at Hut's perspective, see what he's got planned. We've just got an age up in queue going up with the House of Wisdom going to be looking for the economic wing. So that is indeed the correct choice. Actually not researching the preservation of knowledge. A little bit of an oversight here by Hut. I'm not sure if that was intended, but obviously, you know, you want to get that out, get that done quickly. Uh, could use a little bit of a hand on these lumber mills as well. Uh, probably want to bring in just another lumber camp right here. Just try and get it extra a little bit close, but Hut beginning now to moat or to um, motorboat down towards the south of the map and and really just look to secure spot out if there's any docks he's looking for line of sight uh, and to see if there's any docks up here to the north of the island gonna be doing a little bit of scouting himself we'll take a look we'll reveal the map and see exactly what we've got going hut looking pretty decent though uh finding this market this trade site this is a bit more of a decent trade site he has actually spotted i suspect he's spotted this trade site up here to the north let me uh sorry guys let me just do that i i do think he has spotted that that trade site but it can just be a little bit hard to know if he's actually uh, done that at all just because of the way the game works at the moment i suspect that's probably going to get fixed and uh now more and more more and more dows beginning to to come out and this is the difficult spot okay once your opponent has taken control of the water how do you get back into it now there's multiple ways that you can do this but you're gonna have to edge your way into it number one is a keep you gotta keep out and you're gonna be fine you're gonna be able to hold on but th the difficult spot is that it's going to take time for him to do that. The second option is a little bit more reasonable, outposts. So he starts putting up outposts, stick some villagers in it. It's going to be able to hold on for dear life. It's going to be able to do a little bit better. Age 3, going to be coming in for Hut very shortly. We take a look over at the perspective of Zerton. We actually have some ships coming out. We've got a Hulk that's coming out, a second Hulk coming out, a third Hulk, Hulk down to the south. Yes, we do. But the issue that is going to happen right now is this Hulk is significantly outnumbered. Take a look. Oh my lord, never mind. I said the Hulk, Hulk was outnumbered, but it's actually healing up all the damage from those Dows. Hut is forced to retreat. And the, that, that was insanity. Did you guys see that? The Hulk was just like, meh, meh, meh. I'm not even worried. <laughs> so let's talk about the interaction that happened there. Eight ranged armor. 
This is a hard counter, a, an absolutely hard counter to the Dows. Why? Because the Dows have got nine attack. So only one damage per arrow is going to happen. Combine that with the fact that he's sitting within the dock range. The dock is going to be healing him up passively. And the Hulk held. I'm, I'm, I'm genuinely impressed. It goes to show my level of knowledge about this matchup, this meta on these water maps is obviously not at the level that it needs to be because that is a curious interaction and I'm, I'm impressed to see it because it really goes to show that when it comes to being forced off the water, I was of the opinion that, you know, at this point, he's in a difficult spot, but re in reality, he's fine. He's fine. He can always fall back to this point. Obviously, now, one of the interesting interactions that I'm going to talk about is plus two attack, which is actually coming in right now. You need to think about it from the perspective of Hut, okay? If his boats are doing 9 damage, okay? His opponent's got 8 armor. If he goes up from 9 to 10 damage, he doubles his effective damage against these boats. So it's an incredibly important upgrade that he gets. And by the same token, it's really important that Zertan gets his upgrades. But I don't think these ships are actually affected by the upgrades from the blacksmith and they're not you can see right there it would tell you if they are so you can see benefits from blacksmith upgrades they do not so that plus two attack really important going to be doubling the damage and when they're out in the open ocean oh my lord look at the size of that fleet dow's coming in in mass right now from hut hut looking in an absolute awesome position we've got some bagla is behind i want to say bagla i'm not sure exactly how to pronounce that I, I will look it up make sure that i know but hulk is I i'm excited to see these hulks in action Plenty of hulks down here to the south. How many, how many hulks are you going to make there, Zertan? Zertan got seven hulks up sitting inside his uh, his docks. Going to be absolutely fine here. And now you can see... Look at the, the hulks are just not even taking damage. They're just like... Meh, meh, slowly going down. But look at the, the amount of damage that's coming out. One of the hulks getting focused down quite significantly. The backer is doing a plenty of damage. Backer is doing 50 damage a shot. So that's what's going to be driving down that HP. But you can just see that Zertan's able to repel his opponent. Hut's going to walk away with his tail in his leg. Or rather... Uh, sail away with his tail between his legs. Maybe his tail between his fins. Probably a better better thought, but now we really see Zertan beginning to push out. Just when I thought this game was over, Zertan looks to be capitalizing here and really taking a better position than his opponent. Plenty of uh, plenty of hulks still in there. We take a look at Hut's perspective. He's only got six Dows and six Baglars. Got a couple of fishing ships in there as well. And focusing down the enemy ships. You can see out in the open ocean, they're a little bit more effective, the Dows are, because there's not that big heal that's happening all the time with those uh, with those docks. We'll take a look at the perspective of Zertan. I'm curious to see exactly how far his economy's come along. He's got 53 villages at the moment. Now, keep in mind, out of those 53 villages, I think almost every single one of them is an actual land village. I don't think he's got any fishing boats left. He's just going to be fighting the, the water battle without fishing boats. His opponent, on the other hand, Hutt, doing pretty decently on 67 villages. Now, keep in mind, a significant portion of those are fishing boats. Fishing boats are very nice to gather. It's also an, an additional source of food that you are going to be able to rely on for the rest of the game. So whereas your opponent is going to have to eventually move into uh, farms, you know, going to have to look for boars, going to have to go up to deers eventually, you're not going to have to do that. You, you are just able to sit out here getting deep water fish. What I'd be really curious to see is whether we actually start to see some potential trading going on. A lot of people don't realize, but when you're trading with the coastal trade posts, using trade ships we actually see explosive dows beginning to come out but the trade ships right here they're expensive to invest in okay but they return a lot i'm not kidding you when i tell you that the potential trade that you could see from this trading post site to these docks right here would be upwards of about 150 gold each run and and 75 wood it also brings back wood explosive dows sitting on the back you can see that little fire just sitting there ready to pounce i wonder i'm curious if zertan's going to be able to spot that down push beginning to come out now and this is an absolute cracker of a game right now i am i'm impressed as hell at these two players how evenly matched they are up on the water you might think this is a, a, a fire dow it's not these dows are just on fire there's the explosive one coming through now it looks like he's going to be charging up the front i'm curious if zertan's going to be able to realize that this is a, a potential threat he does he does re realize he turns around fires it focuses it down and we see the rest of the dows that do eventually begin to go down. More fishing boats beginning to move up. I feel like this is not the right decision. You want to get these fishing boats back. You want to make sure they're healing. Hut's looking like he wants to think about potentially going up to the Imperial Age. Look at getting that last tier of, of boat. More hulks beginning to, to uh, return back to base. Return back to safety. And it looks like Hut is going to be able to push back his opponent just ever so tightly. Ever so briefly for now. Zertan running away ever so slightly. And what is going on right there? Do you guys see that? That is that is a curious graphical effect. I'm, I don't know exactly what's causing that. 
Um, that is that is interesting. We're going to go back to Hut's perspective. Still happening, but uh, have to report that one to the devs. And uh, these these civilizations are incredibly evenly matched right now. Plenty of hulks out. Let's take a look at the economy. We'll see what's going on for Huck. Uh, for Huck. For Hut. For anybody unfamiliar, there is actually a player, a StarCraft 2 player by the name of Huck. Uh, pl a Protoss player from the United States, if I remember correctly. And he is famous for his BM. I'd love to see him play Age of Empires 4. I just know he'd be typing in the chat right now saying, Ha! You call that an attack? I wasn't even, I wasn't even using my hands. I was, I was using my, my nose to type. Something like that. You know, that, that's just classic Huck. But, uh, he's from Canada. All right, there you go. That, that makes a lot more sense about why he'd be so BM'd. Those, those Canadians, you know, they're notoriously bad mannered. I'm just, I'm just kidding. I know there's going to be Canadian people on YouTube right now. Like, ah, you, what did you just say about Canada? We're the nicest people in the world. I know Canada. You guys are nice. Uh, Zerton. Going to be having a, a, a nice little opportunity to raid up here. One of the things I'd love to see him do, potentially just move a, a single boat around here. But I guess one of the things to talk about as well is the fact that there's no dropping that's occurred yet. We haven't seen either player look to drop. Uh, what I might do is I might just change the perspective over to Hearts. I want to reveal his perspective. There's a couple of avenues that you could consider dropping on. Like you could very easily go up here. When we take a look at Zerton, Zerton only really knows about what's happening over on the, the east side of the island. Doesn't know what's happening over on the west side of the island. But... There's definitely avenues or, or, or ways for them to drop. It's not like the, their inability to drop is preventing them from stopping. Or from... Sorry, it's not like there is an inability for them to drop uh, in this situation. So I'd be curious to see if we're going to have any potential drops come out. In the majority of games that I've seen on this map, the drop is what actually finishes the game. If you can get, say, 10 Lancers or 10 Knights into your opponent's base, they have absolutely nothing to stop it. And they just have a field date. When you consider the Town Center can only hold 20 Villagers inside... You know, just these villagers here alone, that's 26 villagers. So that's six village deaths. Look at all these ones right here. They are all going to be going the way of the dodo. And so it, it is an effective uh, an, an effective perspective that you can potentially seek. So we'll make sure that we keep tabs on these players and see if they look to do that. A little bit of long-range mining going on right here. But uh, double lumber camp going to be going down on the north, north side of the coast here. And uh, Zerton looking like he's in a pretty decent position. Not going to be going up to Imperial just yet. Uh, on the other hand, though, Hut about to hit age four. And when he hits Imperial Age, he's going to be going up. So avoiding the trade wing. So going up uh, the uh, with the military wing as his last choice. Economy not looking that good. He's got 78 military right now, but uh, it's looking a little bit stagnant. I guess he's got a lot of units out at the moment. Eight, eight, oh, am I seeing that right? 18 explosive Dows? He's... he's oh, they do a lot of damage. Five... 500 damage and 200 plus against warships? He's got 19 of these guys. Oh my lord, this is going to be disgusting. Get ready for it. Here it comes, the attack of the explosive Dows. I think that his opponent Zerton has realized as he attempts to run away. More explosive Dows going to be coming into the opponent's base. Demolition ships, it's Dow on demo. And we've got plenty of action as they all fall down. Look at the carcasses of the ships go down right now. It's an absolute massacre. Who comes out on top? It looks like Zerton's going to be able to push back Hut in this situation. Despite being down a single age, he manages to come out ahead. Holy, holy moly. And now we're going to have a bit of a problem because players are... <laughs> oh my god. I could not believe that. I, I could not believe that. More explosive Dows now going to be coming out. Zerton, on the other hand, going to be doing his best to try and seal in the deal here. Keep in mind, the ships that he's got, the Hulks here, do 100 damage. They actually clear docks very, very effectively. We see more explosive Dows going to be coming out now. Fishing boats just doing their best, but look how quickly they're taking out these, these docks. These docks are not long for this world, and I think Hutt realizes he's in a bit of a difficult spot. Because at the moment, this is a large part of his economy. He's got a water economy that's over here. But take a look down here on the map down here. Over to the west of the map. And Hut is expanding out. Just when you thought Hut was in a bad position, he says, I'm not in a bad position. I'm fine. Got a couple... couple. Oh, that's a transport ship. I thought that was a Bagla. That is a transport ship. They look very similar to the Bagla. I wonder what the, the objective differences are between those two. We'll have to pay attention. But uh, Zerton doing a great job. We're going to switch perspective so that we, we're not under attack like that. And just make sure that we're we're catching up with Zerton. See exactly what he's up to, what he's thinking. We take a look on, on his island. Not really considering an expansion just yet. We see his economy. He's only got seven villagers on, on food. Just enough to maintain having a reasonable villager count. So really just keeping it minimal. But uh, we talked a little bit about potential raids coming up here. And whether we saw Hulks, just a single Hulk moving up. And now we see 
there's a few remaining trees that sit up here. He's going to be able to force Hut off these trees and into a bit of a difficult spot now, despite being up one age. And look at those villagers just evaporate. Oh, that, that one's actually died, but that, and that one has as well. But there was a villager here that just disappeared into the hill. One of those uh, graphical glitches that will eventually get cleaned up. But uh, Zertan looking like he's in a pretty decent position. Going to be closing out a couple more transport ships up here to the north. He should realize that with all... What are you doing with all these transport ships? That's the, that's the third transport ship. Did you think you were making trade ships, Hut? What, what was the go there? Zertan in a very decent spot, though, at this point in time. Going to be able to close out this game incredibly effectively. The, the question is, how does Hut get back into this? Because now he's lost one, two, three, four docks on the south of his island. His enemy has got a Hulk sitting outside this potential expansion point. Up on the, the eastern face of the island, he's got three docks remaining, and it doesn't look like there's going to be any more docks that come in. Oh, my lord. Oh, my lord. Look what's happening right now. Hut is really thinking outside the box here. He is really thinking outside the box. He's going to be moving over to the the eastern island. Now, keep in mind, there's actually two eastern islands. Is he? Is this... Uh, Would you guys call this cockroaching? I don't know if you'd call this cockroaching. Do we take a look at the scores? I want to have a look at the score and see where these players are up to. Zerton with a significant lead at the moment. So 4.3k versus 3,200. 3, so a pretty decent lead right there from Zerton. Uh, definitely demonstrating the fact that, uh, that he is ahead objectively uh plenty of hulks out and i i think that zerton at this point would be a little bit confused like okay what's your plan like how are you going to win this because i can see a very clear avenue for zerton to win this game and that is sacred sites that's exactly why these sacred sites exist so all he needs to do is get two of his prelates out onto a transport ship transport one over here transport two over here and that's it Capture the sites, wait for 10 minutes, and you win the game. You don't have to push in here. Your opponent has to come to you. Now, obviously, there would be a fight. Because we know that Hut is standing over here. He's on this island already. So now there's, there would be a fight that would happen over this sacred site. So just, just remember, he wouldn't be out of the game completely. And then that would further evolve the game, force the game. And now, my friends, we have another, another expansion. But they're not going to be alone with each other for long. Let's have a look and spot. Do they see what's happening? Zertan doesn't spot Hut. Hut doesn't spot Zertan. They're mining the same woodline. And oh, they can finally see each other's villagers through the woodline. It's like, hey, wait a minute. Oh, he can't see through. Oh, they just get a little bit of line of sight. A brief little bit of line of sight right now as they each focus down the trees. And now I think he's realized he's like, wait, 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 wait. Those are not my villagers. Okay, okay. It's time. <laughs> barracks. Everyone, build barracks immediately. We got to go. <laughs> we got to look. at <laughs> Have you ever seen a barracks built with 23 villagers before? Got outposts going up. I don't think Hut has realized at this point. Hut's still happily mining away. He's like, yeah, I we'll up the trees. Get the supplies. Drop the supplies. Get the supplies. <laughs> Drop the supplies. Yeah, I would be saying the exact same thing, Hart. That is concerning, to say the least. We uh, we close that one up so you guys can't see the, the game time. And uh, over on the east of the map, Hart's still mining out over here. But uh, Hulk's just slowly searching. He knows that now his opponent has expanded over to this island. So he's going to be potentially looking at, uh, at, at sourcing where the rest of his units are. But I think... I think Hart has realized that there is no chance these villagers are going to be getting out alive. Men-at-Arms now coming in. These are only early Men-at-Arms, keep in mind. They haven't been upgraded, but I think two Men-at-Arms are probably going to be more than enough to deal with 19 villagers. I'd be curious, though. But um, there's going to be no more reinforcements coming out here for Hart. If he loses this, this island, that's it. It's gone. Absolutely everything has been secured. <gasps> oh, naughty, sneaky. Transport ship coming over. Is he going to be able to make it? The transport ship's actually down to almost half HP. I, I think this transport ship is going to go down. I don't think he's going to be able to get it out. I think he realizes as well. Oh, they're healing up the transport ship. Oh, they're so smart. Oh, Hut is just on another level when it comes to this stuff. Another transport ship down here to the south. He heals up the transport ship with his villagers, takes them back over to the other side. And <laughs> this guy has got a lot of IQ. I'm going to say that much, okay? That is impressive IQ. He manages to get 16 villagers out from that island. How big is this guy's brain? I'm curious because <gasps> now we've got a wonder being built. The prayer hall of Ukuba comes down. Hut is really going for it. It is happening. Dropping down a keep as well. Double keep. Oh my lord. Hut is really going for the victory right now. This is an insane game we are getting to witness right now. A wonder victory. A wonder victory. Defend your wonder. That's the new objective. 
and you can see Hut is really just going all in. Now, not only does his opponent's got complete map control, but it doesn't even matter. He was so ahead of the game. He knew from the beginning, he knew what he had to do. He was mining out this whole stone, and now he's placing down his keeps. He's going to be in a great spot. He's got, a, he's got another thousand stones sitting here. He can make another two keeps with this. He is going to be in an absolutely insane spot. How do you even... How do you even defend, or how do you even attack this? Okay, okay, we got to think about this, all right? From the perspective of Zertan, what's the way that you go about this? Because I'm really concerned for him right now. Okay, first thing that you need to do, bombards. I think you don't go trebs, you go bombards. You go for like three or four bombards, you bring them in, and you right-click the wonder. And they're just going to, they will instantly focus it down, target it down. Oh, all right, get ready. Third keep going up now for Hart. Oh, they are really putting on a show for us. This is like, this is one of the best show matches I've ever seen. This isn't even a show match. This is this is just a, a game in quick search that we found. This is impressive stuff. I am absolutely... I, I'm, I'm, I'm curious to see how this one plays out, ladies and gentlemen. We'll take a look at Zertan because the action is going to be on him. The Keep in mind, okay, it, it, the, it, it now depends on Zertan. Zertan has to act here. He can't just sit. Remember we talked earlier about the sacred sites, okay? If Zertan had taken these sacred sites, then it would have been on Hut to respond. But Hut has just got the biggest brain. I don't even know. How does he fit it in a body like that? I've seen the guy. He's barely seven foot tall. It's just, it's insanity. It is absolute insanity. Plenty of villagers going to be gathering up gold here over for Hut. Let's take a look at his perspective. Just gathering up gold. I think he might be market trading for more stone. Actually putting up a few walls as well. This is very nice. I like this from him. Maybe even see, oh, I guess he could stone wall, but then you can, they can always just get siege down, but... You know, I'm, I'm thinking, you know, why have you got a stone wall? Is there petards that you're thinking about? What is it that you're potentially thinking about here? But uh, we'll take a look down over at the south of the map. We'll check on Zert and see what he's up to. Oh, baby. Oh, baby. We got some Carracks out. These guys are the warships of the Holy Roman Empire. They are numero one. So large sailed war vessel armed with broadside cannons. Anti-structure specialists. Low movement speed. Cannot produce Carrack. Maximum population capacity has been re re reached. Uh, we're at 199 right now. So we've got... How many Carracks are out in total? We've got four Carracks out right now. So we take a look at their range. We'll see exactly how far they fire. They have a range of nine tiles, okay? Nine tiles is pretty decent. Uh, but now we've got a defensive keep getting placed. I'd rather say... It's, it says defensive keep. I think this is more of an, ag of an aggressive keep. Uh, this is a, a foothold that he wants to secure. Now, when it comes to the timer for the... Uh, for the uh, Wonder Victory, we can actually see it here on the Wonder Tracker. We've got seven minutes that remain. And we're going to turn that one off because you guys can count it down. Seven minutes. So what's the time that he's got to get this down by? He's got to get it down by about... Uh, it works out to be about 39 minutes and 30 seconds. That's his go time. 39 minutes and 30 seconds. Is he going to be able to make it? Siege Workshop now going to be going down on Hut's Island. Hut in a difficult spot here. Two Siege Workshops now. We take a look at Hut's perspective. He's got 62 villagers. If there's a will, there's a way. And I tell you what, Hut has definitely found a will. Another keep up here to the north, trying to defend his flank. Very cognizant of the fact that uh, his opponent may look to land up on the north shore here. And really doing a great job of just just preventing any potential attack. Just We, we see just how impressive these Karaks are. Really dealing out a lot of damage here. Hut trying his best to hold on for dear life. He's got another six minutes to go. We'll take a look at the Wonder Tracker. Six minutes and 19 seconds. Not much longer to go. He's about a little bit more than halfway. But now we see we do indeed have the Bombards come out. Now, you've got to remember with these Bombards, okay? He can very easily just focus down this, this Prayer Hall of Ukba and not even worry about the Keeps. The Keeps are going to take time before it actually manages to take out the Bombards. So I'm thinking the best thing for him to do is wait until he's got about four Bombards out and then strike at once. Then the game should be over. He should be very easily able to move in. He's probably... He's got the Bombard out. Does he show it to his opponent? I don't think he did actually show it to his opponent. Uh, I don't... You know, I'm sure his opponent probably realizes... Hut's probably realizing right now that uh, it's very likely. But what just happened there? I think we just had this, a villager delete? Or was it just... Was it the keep firing on the... <laughs> the keeps are firing on the villagers. The Bombards are now moving into Bombard mode. Going to be firing on the keeps. And look how much damage they are doing. The Keeps, on the other hand, have got, only got a, tile, a range of 8 tiles. Bombards, on the other hand, have got 10 range. So they do not need to worry about potentially being hit by the Keeps, despite only having... Uh, he's actually losing a bit of health there. What's happening? Where is he getting shot from? He's getting shot by something. Oh, my, my mistake. He's got a 10-tile attack. The Cannon. The Siege Cannon. You can see right there, it's got a 10-tile attack. It is the 1, 2, 3, 4th attack down. It's a little bit confusing because they, the, they've got so many different... Uh, 
things that they can be using. But now we see we've got to keep getting healed up. And look at the attack or the, the damage that's getting healed up right now. Zerton really putting on the pressure. We'll take a look at the Wonder Tracker. With less than five minutes to go, Hut is holding on for dear life. But he's going to be very exposed on this side. If this castle goes down, which it is about to go down, the, the keep goes down. His villagers are left with no choice but to just run around in circles at this point. He's got plenty of... Uh, Plenty of stone, but now the bombards are going to come in, and I suspect we may be seeing GG any second, ladies and gentlemen. Here it comes. The Wonder is about to go down. Four bombards sitting on the front line for Zertan, and he's about to be crowned the champion of the inaugural Aussie Drongo show match for the closed beta, the open beta. I don't, I don't even know. We're just, we're just talking out our ass right now. It's all right. Four minutes to go. Oh, he, oh, he's healing. He's healing the Wonder. Look at it. <laughs> oh, it doesn't go as fast as you need it. Three, two, one. There she is, ladies and gentlemen. Good game. Well played. One of the best games of Age of Empires I've ever seen. And that just really goes to show how amazing these victory types are. Without that wonder victory, Hutt would have been out of this game a long time ago. And it makes the game more exciting. It forces people to fight each other. And by the same token, Zerton could have taken the control of those two holy sites, but he didn't. If you're watching this on YouTube, make sure you leave a like. Fellas in the chat right now on Twitch, why aren't you guys saying hi to YouTube? At least say hi to your mum. That is an impressive game. Absolutely well played to both players, and I will catch you guys in the next one. Damn, dude, what a game. That was absolute insanity. That was absolute insanity. Holy shit.